Kinley! You sadistic bastard! Quentin, my boy. Try to have a little dignity. Dignity? The damn dingoes will eat me alive! Well, then, you might have thought of that, you know, before you decided to uh, betray me. You betrayed me! And everybody else who trusted you! If you're going to go on and on about it, Quentin, I see no point. The point is, I'm going to die up here. <laughs> <laughs> that was my intent, Letty. Mr. Words. Yes, sir. Come along, Mr. Words. Mr. McKinley, I think um, maybe it is a bit much. I mean, all those wild dogs. Come on. Well, uh, it's a terrible, cruel way to die, sir. Indeed. You see it that way, do you, Mr. Words? Uh, yes, sir, I do. Ah, oh, well, then. Quentin! Mr. Words has suggested, and I do agree with him, I ought to be merciful. The Lord knows why. Quentin! <laughs> there you are, Mr. Words. We've saved him from the dingoes. Wingate. Mr. Wingate. Are you here, Mr. Wingate? You do not board till you get permission to come aboard. Yes, sir, Mr. Wingate. Yes, sir. It is me, Tinker Leong. Only just me. Alone. I. You want permission to come aboard? Oh, oh no, no, sir. No, sir. I can say it right from here. Then say it. My employer, Mr. Cathcart, sends his humble regards. Hell he does. And asks the pleasure of a visit from you at his offices as soon as possible. You tell Cathcart if he wants to see me to come on down to Sausalito himself. Oh, regretted to say that Mr. Cathcart cannot do that. His slip disco is bothering him something fierce. Is that a fact? Yes, he's in great pain, Mr. Harry. Great pain. Great pain. Great pain. So, what shall I tell my employer then? Tell him I'll be there. As soon as I finish lesson number nine. Yes, sir. Otherwise, I'd have come to you. I know how you hate to leave your boat. 
Well, before they pack you off to the hospital, maybe you better tell me your problem. Well, your problem is a man named Lester McAnally. Your problem, Brutus. I can make it your problem, Harry. Oh, yeah, and it'll always cost you. It already has cost me. 400,000 bucks. It's very expensive. McAnally. What's he do? Lester McAnally lives in Australia, in the outback, in a town called Opal Ridge, which just happens to be one of the premier black opal mining towns of the world. I've heard of it. Of course you have. I've been retailing opals out of there for years. The mines are practically played out now. But three years ago, Lester McAnally, who'd only been working there that long, found an opal. A world-class, deep blue, bloody wonder of an opal. About 35 carats with a flash of white down the middle. Zigzagging like a streak of summer lightning. Lester McAnally called it the blue lightning. Put a price on it of 250000 God. Brutus, how can you spend that kind of money for a piece of rock? How could I not? My man in Sydney, Quentin McQueen, sent me photographs of it. And dear God, Harry, it literally glowed. No, oh, I know. I can't expect you to really understand. How could you? You're not of the fraternity. <laughs> but once you are hooked, Harry, my boy, you are irrevocably and irretrievably committed. You're in this thing for $400,000, and you still haven't got an opal. Because he keeps upping the price, and I keep meeting it. Because it's, it's one of a kind. It's probably the last of the great opals. That's no exaggeration, Harry. I mean it. It's the last of the great opals, and I must have it. So tell me, what's the price up to now? Uh, half a million. <laughs> now, I want you to go down there, and I want you to get my money back, or get the opal, or kill him! I mean, kill him, the bloody lying, cheating! Kill him! That's the quickest recovery from a slip disc I've ever seen. He'll kill you if he can. He's IRA, a bomber. He's hiding down there from the British. He's killed 56 people in London with his bombs. And he'll kill you in a minute when he knows what you're after. And he runs that town of Opal Ridge with an iron fist. When you go in there, you better be ready to kill or be killed. I must admit you're not usually so candid. But I can assure you of something, my friend. If I take this on, it's going to cost you. 75,000 plus expenses. 100,000 plus expenses against 25% of the true value of the opal, whichever is greater. No way. Absolutely no way. Thanks for the champagne, Brutus. All right. Hey, our $80,000, not a penny more. Take care of your back. Be reasonable, Harry. I'm not a rich man. 85,000. See you, Brutus. Oh, Harry, for old time's sake, as a friend! <gasps> Could be. You the American blood. Could be. 44 Magnum. Heavy enough for you? Smith and Wesson. Got any leather for it? Oh, of course, mate. Shoulder harness, hollow points, shot shells. What's this for? Intruders? Name your price. Oh, you are, mate. Let's call it 900. American dollars. 900. 
Let's call it armed robbery. Oh, have a heart, mate. I have a sick mum to support. Got his snake. Hello? Yes? Oh, no. No, I've, uh, I'm expecting your call, Miss McQueen. Kate, please call me Kate, Mr. Wingate. All right. You call me Harry. Cathcart painted a pretty black picture of this man, McAnally. What's your husband do for him? Lester's one of my husband's clients. Lester? We've known one another a long time. Sorry. I'm nosy. Goes with the job. It's all right. I'll tell you whatever you want to know. Thanks. I remember that. McKinley's never going to give up that opal, you know. He's going to have to come up with $400,000. He'll never give you that either. Uh, never say never, Mrs. McQueen. Don't underestimate Lester McKinley. He's very dangerous. I never underestimate anyone, Mrs. McQueen. What would you say to going up to Opal Ridge with me? What for? I don't know you. I don't know your husband. Maybe you've already gotten the Opal from McAnally. Maybe your husband's waiting for you at the airport. Maybe you're just here trying to throw me off the track. I don't know. That's ridiculous. I phoned you, remember? All I know is if I've got you, I've got one leg up on that opal. I like being one leg up. Why don't you come along? So, it's true what they say about you Americans. What's that? Pushy? Yes, all right, I'll come with you. But don't imagine it's because I'm afraid of you. It's because I'm concerned about my husband. Why do you people say McKinley when it's M-A-C-I-N-A-L-L-Y? It's just the Australian way of saying it, I suppose. <laughs> there are some differences between us and you Americans. No doubt you've gathered. Not too many. So how long has it been since you've seen your husband? Three weeks. And you haven't heard from him since? No, nothing. That'll 
teach him to mess with a California driver. <laughs> Mr. Wingate, how does somebody who's just landed in this country manage to get hold of a gun? Found it under the harbor bridge. You don't miss much, do you, Mrs. McLean? I knew you were carrying at the restaurant. <laughs> carrying? You use that expression in Australia? Oh, sometimes, but I learned it in Los Angeles. L.A. Have you been there? Yeah, I worked for the sheriff's department for a couple of years. No kidding. Lady sheriff, huh? <laughs> no, not exactly. Hold it. Go on, run. Go on. Thank you for covering me. I try not to make a habit of it. That's the third time your husband's clients tried to kill me. be heading for the airport. It's all clear. They're going down. You all right? Oh, look what you've done to the car. Keep your shirt on, mate. Mr. Wingate here is in the employ of a very wealthy American. Take care yeah, of but look what you've Mr. done to Brutus it. Mr. Brutus Cathcart of San Francisco will take care of everything. I like your style, Mr. Wingate. Still willing to take on McKinley? Willing. I had an offer I couldn't possibly refuse. Hey, 
Get in. We'll get him at the other side. Yeah, yeah. Go on, go! Tower, this is Mike Yankee Alpha, ready for takeoff. Now say again, Yank. Doomba Tower, this is Mike Yankee Alpha, ready for takeoff. Yeah, I think I got the most of it, Yank. You want to give it another go? <laughs> Katoomba Tower, this is Mike Yankee Alpha, ready for takeoff. Ah, uh, many thanks, Mike Yankee Alpha. Got you down for Mudgy. Dubbo, Canamble, Walgut, and Opal Ridge. Check. Check. Mike Yankee Alpha, clear for takeoff. Would you say that I didn't? This one's got keys. Oi! What do you guys think you're doing? That's Dr. Miles' plane. You just can't come in here. Can't do what? Landing at Turawina. Look at that cloud bank over there squatting right on top of Turawina. Thereabouts. You want to fly in clouds? Might be some definite advantages. Why on earth? Because I think we're being followed. Yeah, we're being followed. They don't give up, do they? Yeah, they're going to get us. Oh, 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 they Miss McQueen, it's going to be a fast landing. Keep an eye out for the potholes.
All right, so they didn't crash. Try the Walgett Road. Right. You know, McKinley's got a whole collection of thugs around him, all murderers and terrorists. Sounds like my kind of people. Are you really ready to die for an opal? To live in? I'm not ready to die for anything, Mrs. McQueen. Are you married? He could say that. Yes. You mean living together? Oh, yes. What's she like? Well, she's a little bit older than I am, but she's a real beauty. Older by how much? Nineteen twenty-four. She's uh, sixty-two years old. Sixty-two. But well preserved. Really. Yeah. She's wooden hauled. Schooner rigged. She moves through the water like God on snowshoes. A boat. Oh, no, madam. A ship. A proper sailing ship. So, you're not married? I was once. She wasn't. Somebody. Was that your plane? It was more or less. Well, what was it doing parked in the middle of the road? We didn't have much choice. Let's, let's talk about this somewhere else. You and I? They're friends. Definitely not friends. Well, can I make a suggestion? What? Let's get the bloody hell out of here.
It's the Opal Ridge Air Force. Ain't you gonna check on those turkeys? What's to check? Let's go. Okay. Most of the guys, though. Mate, he's nothing but a mongrel. What are you going to see him for? I'll teach him a little humility. You beauty! <laughs> you got my vote, Jack. Let's go to Opal Ridge. <laughs> That's all right, son. Listen, don't forget what I told you about that bloke McKinley. I'm telling you, he's one of the lowest mongrels I've ever met in my life. Remember what I told you about those truck drivers and what he did to me? So don't turn your back. What are you doing? To pay for the damage. Turn it up. What? Turn it up. Don't worry about it. Look at that windshield. Windshield? Listen, when I get to Alice, I'll be known as machine gun trucking. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't fix that windshield for the lottery. You know why? I'll be more famous than Olivia Newton-Johnson. You drive carefully now, OK? Not bloody likely, love. You two take care of yourself. Take care, Clancy. OK, mate. See you later. <laughs> Wait a second. Want a drink? Yeah, uh, come in, I'll just... How about getting something to eat? Sure, I'm game. Cheers. Cheers. I still don't like your plan, Wingate. Which part? The part where you just walk right in on him. Well, has the element of surprise. <laughs> Are you kidding? He said you followed ever since you got to Australia. Well, maybe he doesn't know I made it to Opal Ridge. Oh, come on. That is the plan, Mrs. McQueen. You don't have to like it. I've been thinking... Uh, I'm coming with you, you know. I'll do better without you. That's not what you said to me earlier today. I wanted you here. And now? Now I've gotten to know you. I trust you. And I don't want to see you get hurt. Wingate, you need me. You don't even know the layout of the casino. I'll find it. It's an abandoned mine. McKinley lives underground. I'll find him, too. You won't, you know. The people won't talk to you. They're afraid of him. I also happen to know that today's the day that all these men are out making collections. Wingate, I have information that will be invaluable to you. There is something you can do. Of course there is. What? Rent us a car. Pick me up out in front of the place. It's going to be a short visit.
I'll be waiting outside with the motor running. Come on out of there in 20 minutes. Don't hang around. You'll be out. Tonic water, you puke. Have a beer. We've got all kinds of beer. Whatever's on tap. It'll be a dollar. It'll be 80 cents. Unless you want to top off what you spilled. <laughs> Have you come in here to commit suicide? I'm just not paying for what the pig slopped on the bar. <laughs> Mr. McKinley. Good afternoon, Mr. Wingate, is it? Yeah, Wingate. I've been watching your progress. You handled yourself very well. What do you say we cut the crap, McAnally? Can I offer you a drink, then? You can offer me a shot of the blue lightning. You had an interesting trip up here, Little Bird told me. It had its moments. Two of my best men, lost and gone. Your best weren't good enough, were they, Lester? Brutus Cathcart wants his opal, or he wants his money back. You give me either one, and I'll walk right out of here and leave you to all your neuroses. Are you trying to be insulted, then, Mr. Wingate? I'm being direct. Why don't you try it? You want directness? Laddie, you have come to the right hole in the ground. Mr. Cathcart has not received the blue lightning because he hasn't paid for it yet. Didn't he pay you $400,000 cash? Yes, indeed. That's correct. 
Wasn't that the asking price? No, no. What was agreed was that Mr. Cathcart would pay fair value for the opal and the market. It was something fierce. Oh, come on, Lester. First you ask him 300,000 and he paid it. Then you ask him 350 and he paid that. Then you ask him four and he paid that. Well, the market. Hmm. What's your background, Lester? Snake oil salesman? You've no doubt been briefed on my background. Yeah, you mean the 56 innocent people you killed? Well, there are some things that simply have to be done. You're dead right, Lester. What'd you do with Quentin McQueen? I haven't seen Quentin in days. But if you're going to go on with your rudeness, I'm going to have to do something about you. Why don't you start by putting that opal on the table? <laughs> Did you truly walk in here without a care if you ever walked out again? Or is it dumb luck that's got you this far? You're that stupid, you don't comprehend the situation. Which is it? I like my chances, Lester. Your chances are slim and none. He's a professional, Mr. McKinley. Yeah, he had help, too. He had help from a woman. Well, he tried to be careful about her. Yeah, when you and Mrs. McQueen are shot together. You're gone. He's long gone, Mr. McKinley. He disappeared off in the center, Mr. McKinley. If you ask me, you'd be stupid to follow him in there, Mr. McKinley. there, Wingate. You do. Hang on. Three more minutes. It 
Some friends of ours are there, Dr. Giles and Reverend Trowbridge. Father Trowbridge, Wingate's lost a lot of blood. I don't know. Needs a transfusion. I do not know his blood type, and we haven't got a laboratory, so. What is it, Harry? Oh, your blood group. Positive or negative? Harry? Oh, positive. Well done, madam. Anyone here O-positive? I know someone. You're a nurse too, huh? He months in Paris, actually. That'll fix him. My blood, good blood. 40,000 years old. You all right, William? I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, if you'd just go and wash up Mrs. McQueen, we'll, uh, we'll get this bullet out. Ninian, would you please bring the cart over here? Thank you. Five bucks says it's a nine millimeter. Well, I'm, I'm not a betting man. It's obvious to me that this man is worth saving. Don't you think so, Mrs. McQueen? God is a strong one. I never thought that bullet had come out. You did a great job, William. If he lives, Missy. If he lives. You got any ice left? For the wound? For my scotch. <laughs> Ninian, hmm? can you help me move the patient? Kate, you can give a hand too. I'd like that scotch. I want to look at him for a while. He looks all right. A little grey. Oh, there's still some blood in him. When Quentin and I were in seminary together, we, we vowed to live celibate in the Roman manner. Did you know that? Yes, Lillian. We did. Vowed, I mean, with entire solemnity on our knees in the chapel at midnight. I know. And we, we kept our vow. We did, Kate. We kept it before the Lord. Until we both fell in love. I know, Ninian. Fell in love with the same woman. Ninian, every time I see you, you tell me the same story. Oh, do I? Yes, you do. And when you don't tell me, Quentin does. I 
I do beg your pardon. He will live. Who will live? The big white fella. He will live fine. Well, we almost lost him. He came back strong as a horse. Is he awake? Yeah, go on, go on. Hell, he'd rather see you than me. Stop playing with guns, you wouldn't get shot quite so often. And I wouldn't need a driver. Strange, it affects everyone that way. That's why Quentin founded the mission here. It was a ruin. He rebuilt it with the help of Jagadu and his people. They love Quentin, almost revere him. So how's that kind of man when he has all of this end up being a private detective? The search for truth, I suppose. As a priest, he, he never really knew whether he'd found it. As, as a detective, he... He gets to the real sordid truth. I don't know, does that make sense? Sure. It makes a lot of sense. The next cop. I'm worried about him. Well, you know the private eye business. He's probably out on the Great Barrier Reef running surveillance on naked ladies. You're a great comfort to me, Harry. You, uh... You were a great comfort to me this morning. When I kissed you this morning... Don't need to explain it. Quentin and I have a very good relationship. But he's... He's a particular man. He's tied up with God and nature and I love him very much but, but what God 
Good morning. Aha, uh -huh. there he is, as bright as a new dawn. Were you looking for me? No, miss. Dr. Giles was. All oh, right. I'll see you later. Keep an eye on my patient for me. Taking for a spin, yes, if you like. Yes, miss. Yes, yes. I understand you gave me some blood. Big bottle. You are full of Jagadu's blood. Uh, Jagadu. Uh, I'm very grateful. Thank you. You are now Pidin Dinjara. You have the blood. Pidin Jajara? Yes, my people, my tribe. You mean I have the blood, so now I'm a member? Yes, you are Orumbara man. Blood brothers. A custom in my country among the American Indian. Ah, yes. I don't know if it works both ways, but I am one-eighth American Indian. One-eighth. One, eight. My tribe is Ogallala Sioux. My ancestor, Tachunko Huiko, was war chief of the Ogallala Sioux. Your tribe fighting wars? Against the white man. Our chief, whose other name was Crazy Horse, helped defeat the white man at the Little Bighorn. Your tribe fighting wars against the white man? We used to. That is very serious business. Yes. Very serious. Now, if you and I are to become true blood brothers, our bloods must mix in your body as well as mine. How does your tribe do this thing? We cut thumbs, hold together. Bloods will mix. The Arambara needs blood on the point. Blood of the man who will use it in battle. This is your spear. Two bloods. Blood brother. Yes. Now we are blood brothers. Now, you make some black fella. <laughs> you make one damn fine red fella. <laughs> wasn't the smartest thing to do, considering you've just lost all that blood. Well, it wasn't the smartest thing, but it seemed like the right thing to do. I think it's rather touching. Quentin has done much the same sort of thing. Still no word? Nothing. Well, you know, Quentin, uh, he'll be out there looking for someone's disappearance. Uh, a lost child? Something like that? Huh? Well, he'll come calling soon. Uh -huh. Are you going in after McAnally? <laughs> well, then you can forget the wound. That's right. Because this time, he's gonna blow your fool head right off. Thanks for the vote of confidence, Doc. Three young bulls escaped from the branding. I'm going up to look for them. Jargadu. This man that shot me, 
McAnally? Bad fella. I'm going after him. He's got a bunch of men with guns. I was wondering maybe I could get you and some of your men to go along. Give me a hand. No. That's white fella's business. I saw I'd ask. sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our brother Quentin and we commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven. Oh, excuse me. I would like to say the Lord's Prayer in the language of the Aborigines by and among whom Quentin was so beloved. Nalara Mamini, Yerra Nini, Wurichin Nunada, Nunada Maui, you are but a little girl. Bidding read Dira, the Nalara Merinuk, Winbeck Nalara Balanji, Winbeck Balabin, Nalara Wokuina, Banalagwarawara, Nuna Dinchin, Mayu Yurra.
Ich sehe diese Hypnose. It used to be. There's more to it now. We are sorry to wake you, my brother, but we have come to tell you a thing. Yes, sir. Mr. Quentin McQueen, he was first man to us. He should not have been killed. Should not have. Therefore, we have agreed among us that when you go to crush the head of this Blester McKinley, we shall go with you. We will be to your left, we will be to your right, and we will be behind you. You, of course, my brother in blood, you will lead. You honor me. All of you. I accept your brave offer. This is the Woomera, and this is the Arambara, this is the Kylie, and this is the Bubbera, which can take a man's head off at the ears. We are teaching the young men the old ways. Growing up against automatic weapons. Ball! Ball! We may believe in tradition, but we're not fools. Nothing much, except we found him. We found Mr. Harry Wingate. That shooting we heard is coming from that station as near as I can figure. You sure it's Wingate? Oh, yes. I'm sure. What's he doing? They're having a flyman corroborate. This passageway leads to the rear, to a dead end. Quentin and I took a wrong turn once and ended up there. There's a large vent to the surface here that could be a lift or even a concealed ladder. Over here is a lavatory and a bunkhouse which sleeps six men. There's a large vent to the surface. All right, that's seven vents. Eight entrances, including the front. It's a piece of cake. We'll go tomorrow about five in the morning. Security will be relaxed by then. Most of the men will be asleep, so we can use the vents to smoke them out. Get out! Everybody, inside! Chipper Lee has seen two white fellas up at Needle Rock. They are long guns and a land rover. Were you seen? No. 
Can we get up behind them? Through the river, up along the trees. Pick five men, let's go. Outside. we move the rest down in the middle <laughs> it's going to be a piece of cake yeah piece of cake all right you two freeze Take the spirit of Crazy Horse with us. Please, don't misunderstand. I just need you to hold me. all over for you. And have you found me?
is pure madness, you know. What's going on? Well, to give medical assistance, and because this might be the last madness in our time. Right, so let's have a toast uh -huh. to, um, to, uh, to the Quentin McQueen Pigeon Jara Sue Crazy Horse Memorial Raid. Cut that out, will you? Do you want to talk to them first? No, they know what to do. Let's go on in. Let's go on in. Don't get yourself killed, OK? Let it break my heart. Mine too, kid. Let's go. I'm not hearing myself having no bleeding ammo. Hold out your hands. Keep your hands up and you black out. <laughs> All right, lads. <coughs> this way. We're up the back shaft. I've had enough. I'm getting out.
Lester. You couldn't shoot me, love. Could you, Kate? He's up there.
Probably run, Harry. No cigar. Who do you want it? That bad. Come and get it. for a long blue water sail somewhere. You'll be needing a crew then, won't you? Yeah, maybe one more, I am. Like a first mate, maybe? 